Hello, Vanderpump Rob's listeners. I have an announcement for you. Some of you may already know that when you join the Vanderpump Rob's Patreon, you get full-length and ad-free episodes, in addition to a bevy of other fun features. But today, Peter Madrigal is joining me once again, so I figure why not celebrate by keeping this entire episode outside of the paywall. You're welcome. See, I started the Vanderpump Rob's Patreon to help build a community and pay the bills. But there are added bonuses for you, the listener. The biggest update is that once I start covering the new season of Winter House, I'll also be releasing Patreon-only bonus episodes in addition to all of the other great features you get at patreon.com slash VanderpumpRobs. So if you're on the fence, I highly suggest you check it out. For less than the cost of a pump teeny, you can gain access to a whole lot of fun. That site, one more time, is patreon.com slash VanderpumpRobs. Now, on with today's episode, with your pal in mind, Peter Madrigal. Oh, and one more note. Peter and I recorded this episode back in December of 2021 over a conference call because it was the safest move at the time. Now, let's get on with the show. Previously on Vanderpump Rules, playtime's over. Kentucky is not moving in, right? She's not moving in, I promise. I'm currently talking to a girl named Brittany. I'm not doing that ever No, you just give them spare keys. Oh my god. Something's telling me I may or may not have a fake friend. I still have a f***ing soft spot for Kristen. There's something about her that I just can't hate. No, no, no! James, no, no, James. James, clearly, he's over the edge. I'm sorry. You are the most beautiful girl I've ever laid eyes on. Welcome to Vanderpump Robs, a sexy, unique recap podcast. Created by me, Rob Schulte. Today we're getting wild. Because it's a full moon, and I've got some howling to do. Peter Madrigal will be joining me soon, but first let's recap Season 4, Episode 2, New Blood. It's a beautiful day in West Hollywood, 82 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. And our good friend Lisa Vanderpump casually introduces us to the newest member of our cast, Lala. But LVP's got no time to chit-chat, because our other newest cast member, Faith, is currently on a training shift with Katie Maloney. Yes, good to see you. Um, so, she's doing, training? She's doing pretty good with the table numbers and what well, room is what. Where's table seven? Table seven? In here? No. No? Nope. Table here? seven. Thank you. Right there. So, let's get back out there. Okay. I'm driving that struggle bus. I own the bus. Sheena comes in for another shift, but before any work can get done, her, Jesse, and Katie recap DJ James Kennedy's behavior at last night's decades themed birthday party. That was so crazy, guys. How do you get that face? And on top of that, Sheena had to spend the last several hours texting with Kristen because James went home with Jenna. Reminder, James is not dating Jenna. He's dating Kristen. There's a bit of a moment where Lala has to take off to Italy and she explains this to Lisa. It's only going to be for a weekend and Lisa approves it. Apparently, Lala's got a modeling job. I take the job as seriously as the job is. I'm seating people at tables. I'm not performing brain surgery. So if that answers the question of if I take my job seriously. Jax shows up to the back parking lot of Sir with his new girlfriend, Brittany. Brittany is from Kentucky and is in town to visit Jax and is also contemplating moving to Hollywood. If she can get a job. So Jax decides to surprise Lisa with an interview. Whose restaurant is this? So any advice for her, for Lisa, you think? She's very intimidating. One of the first questions she's going to ask you is, 
You seem like a sweet girl. What are you doing with Jack? Yes. All right, enough of that. Let's go in. <laughs> All right, well, good luck. Good luck. All right. And just a few blocks away, Tom Schwartz is at his apartment contemplating life and preparing he and Katie's dog Gordo's birthday meal. The couple discuss the state of their relationship and the ultimatum that Katie gave Tom at the end of last season. Okay. I know I gave you that like ultimatum and, you know, everyone's been asking me about that, obviously. Oh but So we're about nine months into that six month ultimatum that Katie gave me about getting engaged. And ironically, the more Katie's been willing to back off, the more I've wanted to get there, the more I've wanted to take it to that next level. We're thriving right now. I've been running a commitment marathon. My legs are wobbling. I know, but Katie you're... quickly changes the subject to focus on how much worse Kristen and James' relationship is than Katie and Tom's. And while this conversation is happening, across town, Kristen confronts James on his cheating behavior and then breaks up with him. At the Surly Goat, Tom, Tom, Ariana, and Katie are all there ahead of time to catch up before the staff outing gets wild. Tom Sandoval has a lot of thoughts on the Jackson Brittany situation. I don't care how sweet this girl is. I can't take anybody serious that dates Jax or that Jax is dating. But before Sandy can continue, Faith and Lala show up and introduce themselves to our old school pals. And there's murmurings of shit talk happening, but before it really gets anywhere, Jax and Brittany show up and the boys go order some drinks at the bar. Dude, you were, f- you were hammered last night. You were saying some explicit things, by the way. You were telling me about how you're going to, before you guys have sex, you make her put on Commerce All-Stars, get her feet extra stinky, no socks in the Commerce All-Stars, maybe walk around the block, and then you can shove them in your I mouth. like her feet really stinky. And not only do I like feet, but I like them a little bit dirty. <clears throat> Moving on. Back at the table, Katie is giving Lalda the third degree about going to Italy after just starting at Sir, as if it's any of Katie's business. Because it seems a bit harsh, considering it doesn't affect Katie whatsoever. But hey, I wasn't there. All I know is what I see on the screen. And while the staff parties... Former Sir employee Kristen pours herself an afternoon glass of wine while lounging on the couch. But of course, James has to show up and ruin her chill hang. James admits to 100% making out with Jenna after Sheena's party. Kristen then presses him for more information, as if that will help. But James lets Kristen know that making out was as far as it went, and that he and Jenna definitely did not have sex. The truth is, you know, Jenna and I were definitely boning. I promise you I didn't have sex with her. I've never had sex with anybody but you in the whole relationship we've been together or not together. I haven't. I still want you to be my girlfriend, Kristen. I want you to be my girlfriend again. James decided to have the balls to tell me the truth, which proves to me that he wants to work on this. Seems like there's drama every day in West Hollywood. We won't stop. Tom and Ariana head to the Joneses to find some new furniture. It's like saging an apartment, but with comfy cushions. When you're buying a couch, it's not about knowing your budget. It's about knowing yourself. We're adulting right now. We are. While lounging, Ariana brings up the drama of Sheena and Kristen. Kristen, of course, used to be Tom Sandoval's girlfriend before she cheated on him with Jax. Uh, feel free to go back to season one, season two, season three to catch up on all that drama. Ariana wants to state, for the record, that she will never cut Sheena out of her life, but does know that if Sheena wants to continue to hang out with Kristen, she's going to see less of Ariana. After the sun goes down. Lisa returns to Sir and is pleasantly surprised that Faith is on it and working hard as a new server. Katie pulls Sheena to the side to complain about Lala, and Sheena is all about the gossip. As predicted by Ms. Vanderpump, Lala will have an uphill battle fitting in at the restaurant, especially when Katie suggests that her and Sheena go ask Lala about her modeling job in Italy. 
they don't buy it. Is, is it for like a magazine or like it's a designer? Or, I have a lot of friends that are models who are actually from Europe and who have agencies from there. And I mean, I think Italy is like crawling with like supermodels. I don't. Are you know calling me that I could never be a supermodel, Katie? And of course, Lala's lying. She admits to it. She just wants to take a trip because someone's going to pay for it. And ultimately, Lala asks Katie and Sheena not to tell Lisa. After this, everyone's back to work waiting tables, except Sheena wants to immediately pivot to Kristen shit-talking with Ariana at the sidebar. Let's let's really think about this, okay? All that sh** last summer where she, like, facilitates this f***ing psychopath chick coming in here to my place of work. Cool. She also punched people at your birthday last year. She, I mean, she's done... Not only at the wedding. Oh, and at the wedding. (laughs) I think she's taking advantage of you in a way, too. Sheena tells Ariana that she's going to meet with Kristen and let her know that she doesn't appreciate the hot, cold nature of the friendship. So at Sheena's apartment, inside we see that she's decorated her walls with fantastic photos from her wedding to Michael Shea. And in no time at all, Kristen and her get down to business. Sheena doesn't appreciate the unkind words Kristen called her in text messages and tries to help Kristen understand how everyone on the outside perceives Kristen's relationships. I'm just saying, it is a common trend with you and Jax and you and or James you and you like and the guys that you bang. me for everything. Kristen, guys that I bang? James you, has been my boyfriend for a year and a half. How do you have like no self-awareness that you can't understand that you're the problem a lot of the times? To be fair, James fucked up. But Kristen isn't helping the situation at all. And Sheena holds firm on how tough it is to be Kristen's friend. Okay, this recap was a lot. But did I miss anything? Let me know at Vanderpump Robs on Instagram or by leaving me a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. After the break, Peter and I talk about all the stuff that he wanted to bring to the table about this episode. We'll be right back. Hi, Craig here from the Bachelor Masters podcast. Do you watch the Bachelor shows ironically, like we do? Do you think critically about the socio-political ramifications of what occurs in the shows, like we do? If so, we're the podcast for you. We, the Bachelor Masters, combine deep dives into the show's problems with jokes and even some sound effects Uh to deliver what we think is a well-rounded podcast you'll enjoy after every episode. So give us a listen, as ironically as you want, on your favorite podcast app. That's The Bachelor Masters, a bridge burner podcast. Hey everyone, Rob here. As you know, I make podcasts. I make a lot of them, and I will continue to do so. And if you'd like to make a show like this one, well, let me tell you about Anchor. First of all, it's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcasts right from your phone or computer. And now you can even add any song from Spotify directly to your episode. The possibilities are endless for what you can create, whether it's music analysis, your own radio show, or something that the world's never even heard before. Wild, if you really think about it. See, Anchor will help you distribute your podcast so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of the heavy hitters. You can make money from your podcasts with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need, all in one place, to make the perfect podcast. So... Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I suggest doing it all from the website. Super simple. If you listened to last episode, you know already that I'm here with a co-host and his name is Peter Madrigal. Peter, how's that eggnog? Oh, well, so here's the thing. I do, I do eggnog with coffee. I like to mix it in. With Ooh. my coffee in the morning. Me too. I like to get that. Uh, I like to get that um, almond milk nog to put in my go. coffee because then it's because uh, then I save the bourbon for the hey, oh, yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah. the thick boy nog. You know. Well, I do. But last time I was doing eggnog with some brandy, which Ooh. is like oh, 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 bring it in the season, baby. <laughs> Santa <laughs> Peter bringing presents early this year. <laughs> I don't know well, about presence, you know. You know, well, the presence of being on this podcast. How about that? There you go. 
No. Now, Peter, we realized last episode that like uh, intros might be kind of fun if you have just a nugget of general memories of Vanderpump Rules that don't have to necessarily be from season four. Is there anything that you always think back to like, oh, God, the first day I met so and so or the pride parades were always a lot more work than they should have been actually you know what's funny is that i i well one of the one of these seasons that we always play at sir is season one right and looking back on that <laughs> kind of look back on season one and where my headspace at was that when i was younger it's like you know we're, we're, we're constantly evolving we're constantly changing it's a constant evolution going through this period we call time life and true we're all shouting out 10 minute cameos to people just trying to figure out who we are i still need to see that uh cameo but before we get into that um last episode we talked about how bail was like kind of fake person and that stood out to me how my youth kind of got in the way of you know the way i think about the way i talk about things and the way i go about things um one thing that popped in my mind was uh, being accused of the Chippendales dancer in Las Vegas. Because <laughs> you know what's funny is that, you know, through celebrity slots, I met a bunch of the guys from Thunder from Down Under. And I joked with Schwartz because Schwartz was always like, for the longest time, Schwartz was like, I'm going to be your manager, Peter. We can get you on the Chippendales. You know, we're going to go to, we're going to go to Vegas. We're going to drop this band up for rules, restaurant, life. And we're going to go to Vegas, and you're going to become a Chippendales dancer. I'm going to manage your career. <laughs> and that comes from that from that random lady sitting right next to me at Chippendales. We was all like, wait, you're a dancer. You're a t- I know you are. And me, the event leads to dying it, right? <laughs> looking back on that, I was I, I like, well, you, like, now that I'm mature, because that, that was a 27, 28-year-old Peter. And I didn't know how to respond to some of this stuff, you know? The only things I knew was college at that time and managing a restaurant which i was very green at at that time as well you know i'm i'm i barely became the manager of sir six months before we started filming and so like i just didn't know how to react i was like uh, and i'm looking back on my face and I'm just like Peter. I, i'm trying to channel my inner vince mcmahon <laughs> uh, avoid that limousine there peter i mean vince mcmahon um <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm like, I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at, I'm looking at some of the stuff that I've done, and I'm like, ah, Peter, you're a dumbass. You know, <laughs> older Peter criticizes younger Peter. If I can go back and talk, I can go back specifically to to for a few things, and I'll review some of these things as we go on throughout this season. But yeah, uh, with this with this one, it's like I want to yell at myself. <laughs> I want to build a time machine. And go back and tell myself a few things. Well, we are our worst critics, Peter. I know we are. Yeah. So I want to go, if I could go back in time, I'd go back to specific moments of my life. I love this one and then a few others throughout these last, this last decade. And I tell myself, just like with Vale on the last episode, I've been like, come here, come here. As I'm walking, because I, I, where we filmed, I walked to it. I didn't have to drive. I walked across the street to where we filmed for that mail scene. I would stop myself and be like, look, she's going to fuck with you. And this time, I would have told my younger self, dude, just admit you're a goddamn fucking Chippendales dancer. Sorry for ranting and screaming, okay? <laughs> ranting and raving, but it's the truth. It's true. You know, I look back on some of my stuff, and I'm just like, what the fuck was he thinking? Hey, at least you have the strength to, like, uh, say that to yourself and then move on. What in this episode, what is, like, underlined three times? What had, in your notes, what had the most exclamation points that you wanted to talk about in this episode? So, one thing that stood out to me was, for the longest time, Diana and I were the only managers there at Sir, And we started bringing on more. We, we made uh, Monica a manager as you know things progressed in my career and things progressed in the uh as far as the show goes i needed more coverage you know what i mean because like you know um one thing that stood out to me in season three was that or in season two was that i was and i'll get into those like you know later on but i wasn't able to come to as many events because i'm constantly at sir and i'm constantly working 
you know, and it was uh, it was tough for me to get off. So we brought in a couple more assistant managers so I could like, you know, be at these events and shoot uh, the these certain scenes. Yeah, and it's funny because right now at Sir, it's back to where it was pre season four. One manager, or like a couple managers, you and Dane. It's just me and Diana again. Yeah, all the rest of them have left. You know, which might answer a lot of questions people have been having about the most recent season because you've got a lot of responsibilities at the friggin' restaurant. Exactly. I mean, for a while there, we're shooting this. We're we're, we're recording this in uh, on December the the eighth. So by December sixteenth till the middle of January, I'm going to be the only. So it's going to be like six days a week for me, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's going to be a lot, you know, but I've done that before. I have. Uh, years ago, I have, you know. But if, if you notice in the first episode of uh, of this season, there was a woman who walked by a truck. She was, she, we had finally brought on someone else to help with the responsibilities. But I remember being like, wow, this is like, uh, this is interesting. Looking back on it, it was all like, you know, Diana's in the scene or the Diana's. You know, yeah, no, for sure. And, uh, you know, I think we should just because it's not a huge thing in this episode. I remember it being much more sensationalized when I watched it for the first time. But like new blood, new character. La La Kent is now a host. And yeah. sir, it's all it's like it's like just showing people to a table. Well, you don't know what I mean, here's the thing. If you don't know the system of, of the restaurant, the specific restaurant you're working at, uh, just telling people where to sit is going to fuck up everything. Exactly. I mean, you have to, here's the thing. Number one, you have to know the table numbers, all right? Number two, you have to know who, like, who you just sat. Because you don't want to double, triple stack. Let's say you, like, I have one, one server in the main room. And there's, like, five oh. rooms. And there's a host that's, you're like, oh, I'm going to sit them in the main room. I just keep on sitting them there. And before you know it, the main room's open. And none of the other servers are doing anything, just twiddling their thumbs. I'm sorry. You're yeah. not even know where you sat the last person. Because if you can't recognize where you sat the last person, and you keep on sitting the, the, that certain server, they're going to get overwhelmed and they're going to get pissed off. I've had that happen before, where they can't figure out that they just sat that particular ring. And not only that, the uh, other servers who are there to work and get tips are not getting any tables, so they're going to be pissed. You can't win if you're just well, no, like... Well, they're not going to get pissed because we pool. Oh, that's right. You guys do pool. So the only person that's going to get pissed is the person <laughs> who has to work all night and then give up a portion of their tips to everyone. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. Well, now, I, hey, just so you know, everyone who goes to eat at Sir now, add that extra 5% onto your tip. Because you know it's going to everyone, you know. You know to... See, that's Peter working as a manager of a restaurant. This is me working as a as a producer who doesn't have to do that. Yeah, oh, man. So you have you have like Ella, uh, Lala talking about how, oh, it's not rocket science. Well, kind of, it's not rocket science, but it kind of is a science. I mean, you have, you don't just go into a restaurant, you know, not have to do anything. You have to like really know your stuff. I totally, totally believe you. I mean, I've washed dishes. My first job ever was a dishwasher at a Mexican restaurant in Kansas. So I, no I bet you can uh, guess how much dried cheese was on those plates. But I can only imagine the thing looming in the room, the breaking of the fourth wall in the room was like, well, she's probably already con contractually obligated to do these days for the TV show. And She's probably already worked in that she's going to go to Italy for one weekend, but we still need to make it work for the TV show a little bit. <laughs> she was so brand new that I had no idea who she was other than my like, new host. So, okay. you know, and yeah, so I really didn't get to know her, know her, you know, so, you know, you got to realize that me, uh, Stasi, et cetera, we've been, we were around at this point in time, we were around for years together. Yeah, years. that's true. That's true. You're talking 2008. Katie came into the picture in 2009. You wow. see what I mean? It was years. We didn't start shooting this TV show until 2011, 12, around there. Years, okay? Four or five years. So we had history. 
like me, and then at that point in time, me as uh, as management, I really didn't get to know anybody because I am like running around. Well, working. and I'm sure in that industry, people come and go all the time. Exactly. I remember and- when I first uh, became a server there. This was 2000, the tail end of 2008. We had a couple of servers come and go, and I already knew how to bartend. I had bartended before, so I already knew how to do that. So I was all like, look, I, I'll be more loyal to this place. Uh, 13 years later, I'm still there. I was all like, I'm, I'll be more loyal to this place than some random servers that you can bring up. I'll, let me let me serve. And, and then they made me a server. And JP left, and they made me a manager in 2010. You know? So Damn. I had to, you know, I worked my way up. But the fact of the matter is, is that uh, because I've been there for so long, I, I really don't get to know people until, you know, a few weeks down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah, That's I totally, cool. I really do. Hey, uh, before we move on to the next section, I do want to mention that, like, hey, uh, uh, the homie Jesse's getting a couple of scenes. I love Jesse. He's like the only person that does my hair. He's been doing, he's been cutting my hair for years. He's I the need, only one that's ever cut my hair. <laughs> Peter, I need a haircut. And if I can squeeze in, I went to the Eagle Rock Barber and they were great in a pinch. I need someone who knows how to do hair. No, oh, yeah. he's he's uh yeah he he's the only one that's uh... <laughs> uh-huh. I mean you got the locks man you got the locks. Let's chat about something I found it blew my mind. Okay, hmm. a lot of people cheat on this show. A lot of people have relationships hanging together by a thread. Mm. And we talked about James and Kristen's volatility last episode. Uh, and everyone knows it's coming to an end. And of course, with James and your revelation waiting for the Uber next to the Jenna, who James hooked up with or whatever, which we find out this episode. I don't think I've ever seen another point where you're cutting between talking heads and the lie. And the person is just owning the lie. Be like, what, do you, what am I going to do? Like. Make her feel like shit in the moment when she already feels terrible. Also, I don't want to have that conversation and be there all day, but we were definitely boning. So, so here's the thing. God damn. I don't remember how crazy this environment was. Okay. <laughs> I have so many stories. Um, and I'm writing a book, actually. No, I got to get back. I got to get back to writing. Yeah. You heard it here first, folks. God, I'm look, looking back on this thing, I I remember how crazy this environment was. I remember how the whole restaurant, you know, it, it permeated this the, this environment it just made everything so hyper aggressive. And uh, and I was always trying to like calm everything down. There was a, I think that was Jackson James arguing. Yeah, it was the last episode, and I had to come in and try to quell the whole argument because. They were talking about how, you know, uh, James. Jax had recently uh, been dumped by Carmen. Yeah. And so, like, that whole thing was revealed. And, you know, it was, it was uh, Carmen was dating someone else. That's what happened. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm witnessing, and, like, I, I'm like running around to my theoretic thing. And then I see this whole argument happening in the hallway of Sir. And I'm literally like, what the fuck are you guys doing? I think they cut, they cut a little bit of that. They cut that out. And I was like, what's going on, guys? We, got to do it take it outside right and then james storms off and i was like james are you okay you know and that's the only thing that they got from that whole uh uh back and forth that whole conversation but uh but yeah it was very it was it was a very crazy environment <laughs> let's just yeah. put it that way and it seems like Kristen can go from zero to a hundred in zero time like in one oh, yeah. second maybe and i can understand if james was like i was drunk and i uh, maybe didn't think through my indiscretion as well as I should have, but uh, we were definitely battling. Yes, <laughs> and now uh, you could just tell he was. I don't know. It's also kind of the cringiest scene in the world because he's laying it on pretty thick that he's in love with Kristen, and you're just kind of like, "Can we cut to a commercial, please?" This episode is brought to you by Carvana. Carvana is in the business of driving you happy. And with the widest selection of used cars under $20,000, you're bound to find a car that'll put a smile on your face. They even offer customizable financing so you can plan your down and monthly payments. To shop thousands of affordable vehicles 100% online, 
Download the app or visit Carvana.com. Availability may vary by market. Do you prefer your podcast to have solo narrators to two people telling private jokes? Are you looking for a podcast that is about true crimes and unsolved mysteries and not, I repeat, not two friends hanging out and rambling about nonsense? Do you like podcasts that stay on topic 100% of the time? If you answered yes to these questions and reenacted an Unsolved Mysteries podcast, it's not for you or the folks that left us those one-star reviews. We are just two pals who love the 1990s show Unsolved Mysteries and have no interest in actually solving mysteries from the episodes we watch and recap. Come get spooked with me, Robert. And my friend and relatively normal woman, Crystal, every two weeks as we talk stack, ghosts, UFOs, food, and occasionally crime on Reenacted and Unsolved Mysteries Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Ibotta. Cashback made easy. If you've been noticing your shopping trips are getting more expensive, you need Ibotta. With Ibotta, you get real cash back, not points, on everyday purchases, like grocery staples or even tools for your next home project. Download the free Ibotta app today and use the referral code SPOTIFY to get $5 for trying Ibotta. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store. You saying a relationship's hanging by a thread and that kind of cut and, and the, how crazy it is kind of cuts into the next thing that I want to talk about, which is the absence, which I hinted at on the first episode, is the absence of the ingenue of the show as my friend Stuart Hill would say, to be Stassi Schroeder. Now, a little bit of backstory to this. Uh, back in April of 2015, um, she started dating that guy Patrick, or what, I, I can't remember when exactly, I don't really care. Yeah. Weirdo serious XM DJ. <laughs> Going back to hanging by a thread and how crazy the environment was, and um, she left... Because of how crazy the environment was. And I remember, uh, back, it was what, April of that year? She and I went to North Cafe at the Grove. And she was sat there and she told me exactly what she was planning on doing. She was all like, I'm moving to New York. I was like, you just give all of it up and go? She's like, yeah, I can't take this toxic environment anymore. And I remember saying, well, you know, good luck with that. And you're like, you know, you, I don't think you should, but okay. You know, I just, I thought that, you know, and she was very determined, and she she left. She, she was gone. Eventually, of course, in this season, she comes back, but she couldn't take the craziness of the environment anymore. She just wanted out. She was gone, you know. And I told her I was all like, uh, I don't, I, I, you know, probably shouldn't do that, but whatever, you know. <laughs> Eventually, of course, she came back, but I mean, at that point in time, I didn't know who this guy Patrick was, but from what I heard from like Katie. Chris and they were all like, this guy's a weirdo. Well, and like in season three, Stasi existed in like a, 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 a negative zone. Like, and I don't mean positive, negative. I mean, like she was never at Sir unless Lisa invited her to a meal. And then she would always just be at cafes with people. She wasn't, she was on her way out before we knew it, you know? Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I'm excited to see the comeback. Um, let's see here. There's, there's not, See, this is one of those episodes I like to call like the setup episode. Well, it, it, yeah, exactly. It's it, it was this episode was solidifying all the relationships and yes. what everyone was going through at that point in time, solidifying all of the relationships. Now, um, it didn't really dig into me and Sarah, and I'm like, I'm curious as to when, like, I'm curious to see when I start watching this again, what where that relationship was at that time because I can't remember exactly how. Things were progressing, myself and her. And I do remember me had hosting a little party, uh, which we'll probably get into. I don't know if they even showed it. Well, that'll be exciting to hear your side of that once we get to yeah. that episode. <laughs> um, well, I think that's a, this is a good time to stop episode two. All of these are going to end up running together, Peter. So if we missed anything this episode, I'm sure our listeners will let us know in the form of a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that we can address it. Um, yeah, exactly. I hope that we can address it. They all know, uh, you know, our, the super fans, the, uh, you know, well, I don't have a nickname for my listeners yet, Peter, so we'll have to think about that. They're ready for more, and they know that you and I work on other projects. But just in case if they don't, we have another podcast called Madrigal at the Movies with Rob and Rob, where we pick a movie, we watch it, we talk about it, 
with our friend Rob Federick, who was the writer and director of The Rive and Destiny, which has a cameo in Vanderpump Rules. So everything lives together in this Vanderpump universe. Wow. Check out Peter's Instagram. Wow. Check out my Instagram. Wow. And we'll see you all on the next episode of Vanderpump Robs. Wait, Rob? Is that who we're talking about? Yeah. On Florida's Space Coast, we think you can have the best of both worlds. Kind of like right now. Driving, at your desk, maybe at the gym, but you're also grooving to some music. Visit us and you'll go to the beach and see a rocket launch. Or go kayaking and manatee spotting. It's all waiting for you on the only beach that doubles as a launch pad. Plan your adventure today at visitspacecoast.com.